color and white and blue. It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their families. Now here's your host, Ken Rollins. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here, and today's guest is Donna Wesley. We're going to talk about a subject that we've been talking about in the past that's not very pleasant. It's about suicide, PTSD, and other things, depression. So stay tuned. Get your pen. You're going to need it. Welcome back into Veterans Issues. Appreciate you tuning in today. Appreciate you tuning in last week. We, we were talking last week about suicide, and, uh, and we had the pastor on here talking about that, Cody Hale, and, and, and we going on over. We have people down here from the VA, and now we, and we talk about every week the 22 that commit suicide. But today we're going to talk about that and some other things. We're going to talk to somebody who's got real close and personal to it. Welcome to the show, Donna Wesley. Thank you for having me, Ken. Well, it's good to have you. Good to be anywhere, Ann. I checked yes, your obituaries is. this morning. You wasn't in there. No, but that's good. Yeah. I woke up breathing. Well, I checked, I checked yours before I did mine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, you uh, before we get into your personal story, uh, you, you're locally here. You live in Clay County or Calhoun? Yes, Cleveland? Li live in Clay County. We're going to hold it against anyone. Well, thank you. No, we, <laughs> we've got a lot of, <laughs> lot of folks that watch us down that area. Uh, what, you, have a, uh, you have a group. It's called Hand Up. What, what is it really called? I know it's a Hand Up. Yes, it's Hand Up, and it stands for helping... We get the control room to bring up a flyer that you've got on this. Right, one. right. Helping another navigate depression, upset, and pain. It's that's an acronym. Hand up stands for. Right, that's I the acronym. I couldn't remember that, saved my life. Helping to, na what is it? Helping? Helping another navigate, okay, navigate. Okay, I got you depression, upset, to... and pain. Okay, there's a, there's a graphic I'm talking about. That that covers what you're you're talking about, the grief, military, families, loss to suicide, PTSD, mourning, caregiving, depression, anxiety. We'll try to touch as much, much of that as we can mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to what brought you into this. You didn't uh, all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, just decided, I want to talk about PTSD. You had something personal happening in your life. Right, Your right. son. That was, yes, my, my son, Johnny Johnson, um, was in the Marines. He was an infantry, infantry Marine. When was that? Um, 2009 okay. is when he went in, straight out of high school. Um, matter of fact, it was about three days after he graduated. We took him, he brought him to brought him up here. Mm -hmm. And um, he transported to Paris Island, you know, for his three months yeah. of recruit training. And, uh, you know, I'd, graduation seemed fine. You know, it was the normal, I, I guess. You know, we just sort of held each other for, seemed like quite a long time, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and rebonded after that three months apart. Um, he came home, he seemed, he seemed a little distant, you know. Uh, seemed like he'd been through some stressful times, and, and I'm sure Island. he was. <laughs> the right. Paris Island itself is stressful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure he was. And one day, you know, I finally just told him, look, you know, Johnny, you're home. I mean, relax a little was, bit. This is after graduation, after graduation mm -hmm. from Paris Island. You know, and it, like, relax a little bit. And he goes, it's okay, Mom. You know, I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. shell-shocked. Yeah. He said, it happens to some of us. You know, nothing to call your congressman mm -hmm. about. Yeah. You know, and... Um, it seemed like every time from there that he was disappointed in the military or, you know, was told he was going to be stationed here and then the last minute it got changed or, you know, something like that. It's, it was always the same thing. It's okay. It's nothing to call your congressman about. You know, like he was well, just rolling with the say. punches. That's what he would say. <laughs> you know, but um, after SOI, he was stationed in Washington, D.C. at 8th and I doing the uh, ceremonial parades, the on honor guard, you know, Dover duty, which uh, I'm sure is hard on all of them, you know, to go and, and bring back the remains mm -hmm. of the fallen, you know, and do the digni mm -hmm. dignified transfers. Right. And um, he was his, he moved up very quickly. He was um, the NCOIC of his teams he was the leader of his firing party. He was the leader of his Dover team. And he served there for two years. And then in 2012, he was just, and I don't know if I can say this on TV, but it was like he was just hell bent mm -hmm. on going to deploy. Right. 
going overseas to Afghanistan. Or right, right, because he called me. And, um, you know, he's like, Mom, this may be my only opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, to go. They've asked me to stay here another two years, but this could be my only opportunity to go. And I didn't understand at the time the mentality, you know, of the Marine Corps and the infant, especially the infantry division. Right. Um, so I supported his decision, you know, and we had things going on at home. His, uh, his stepdad, who he regarded as his dad, uh, was battling cancer, you know, serious issues, head and mm -hmm. neck cancer. And um, so that was always a determining factor with him. You know, he, he would never, I don't even know how to express it. He knew when I was trying to sugarcoat things, Yeah. you know, that at home. And he was like, Mom, you know, just be honest with me. I want to know the truth. You know, don't ever hold anything back. So I would, you know, be honest and keep him up to date. But I supported him. If that's what he wanted to do, mm -hmm. you know, was to go and fight. I mean, that's why he joined. And um, I supported him with that. And he went to 29 Palms in California. Originally, he was going to be going to Camp Pendleton. But then, it, and he was, he was excited about that. And at the mm -hmm. last minute, his orders changed. And he was going to 29 Palms. But that was beneficial in a way because he was with... Uh, several of the guys that he was yeah, with at 8th okay. and I. Gotcha. You know, so he, he had that connection. He had that bond with those people already. And, um, you know, they deployed, and when he came back... How long was he overseas? Seven months. Seven months. Yeah, they did seven months. He was there from March 2012 to October 2012. Well, back to you. When you, when you go, when he went through Paris Island, they taught him how tough he was. Mm -hmm. And anything other than tough is weakness. There's no exactly. in-between. And so when he come home, he had to unwind from all that. He was still mm -hmm. he was still at Paris Island when he got home. Right. And uh, so, and everywhere he went, you said 29 Palms. That scares the devil out of most Marines I know when they say those, <laughs> that name. Right. It, it's really bad. Right. But, I've heard that, you know, since. Yeah. Since I lost him, I've heard that. 29 Palms is really not a great base no, it, to uh, go it's to. It's scary to a lot of people. I lost a brother in the Marine Corps, but it, not from, from that. I lost him later on for cancer, but mm -hmm. he'd always tell me stories about 29 Palms, and I, it's just like, that can't exist, but mm -hmm. uh, that was even worse than uh, Vietnam for him, you know. So. Right, right. But, uh, but anyhow, when he came back from, uh, from Afghanistan, what is the first thing you noticed about him? We got a minute or so, and then we yeah. take a break. He, um... He was very distant, you know, very, uh, very much, very much standoffish. Um, he, he didn't even come home for Thanksgiving. You know, he could have. He had enough time. Uh, but he decided to stay, you know, for reasons of, of a buddy of stay his where? to stay out in California for okay. Thanksgiving and stay with a buddy of his that was going through some tough times. And he came home for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, he honestly spent more time away from home than he did at home during the time he was during on during the time well, he was let's, on let's leave. hold up there because we got to go to break i'm going to keep pick up there when we come back we're going to go to break come back we're going to talk more with donna about her son and the marine corps you folks out there that have one someone serving or a neighbor or something and you might get something out of this so stay where you are be right back get that pen okay welcome back to veterans issues ken rollins we're talking with donna wesley who's the son uh, she lost her son after uh, coming back from Afghanistan. When we went to break, we were talking about when he came home for Christmas. Donna, and, and you said he was real standoffish, and he stayed he stayed uh, out there rather than come home for Thanksgiving. But when he came home for Christmas, what? You know, I mean, it was a happy reunion, but the time, the 10 or 12 days that he was home, he really spent more with friends mm -hmm. than he did at home. And um, the family all got together for a Christmas. And he had stepped out for just a little while. And when he, when he came home, I mean, I had, we had never seen him in the condition he was in. And that was what? He was inebriated, hmm. possibly high, you know, to the point of, I mean, my sister and I just sort of stood in the kitchen and, and just cried, mm -hmm. you know, because we knew that something had happened. Well, did he, did he, uh, 
before he went in, was he? Did he ever drink or anything like that before then? All right, do you ever you ever have a problem with him? Well, you, no, no problems at all. Substance no, abuse, nothing. No, nothing, nothing. Okay. And even mm -hmm. before he went to Afghanistan, he didn't have anything like that. I mean, he he drank. He drank, but yeah, he not he drank. Excessive. Well, you know, I think he <laughs> I think he probably drank excessively. You know, yeah. um, not so much when he was home with us, but just from talking to his brothers and you know now after he's gone, finding well, out let's, different let's back things. Up to, before he was discharged, he got in trouble with a uh, with an officer. What what happened? He got a less than honorable discharge. Um, take me through that. I'll take you through that. He choked on a sandwich one right. night uh, when he had gotten back to the common area in the mm -hmm. barracks. You know, um, according to his brothers, Johnny came in the room and sat down, and you know they all just thought he was drunk. You know, he said they, they said we we were all drunk. Yeah. Um, and he said that he was sitting there one minute, and the next minute he was in the floor and was blue and not breathing. And so, you know, they started measures on him to resuscitate him, and, and it turns out that he had choked on a piece of sandwich. Well, when the um, ambulance or whatever mm -hmm. on a military base got there to transport him, uh, he flatlined in the ambulance, and they brought him back again they had to give him nar nar Narcan, nar whatever Whatever you say that. it, yeah. And um, you know, three minutes later, when they get to the hospital, he's alert, you know, and answering questions and things like that. And what had happened is at an accidental overdose, smoking heroin. Well, while he was while he was in there, and I, you know, I've come to find out just recently that he wasn't even in the hospital four hours, uh, and released to full duty. But after being taken in for OD and yeah, 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 okay. Um, so you know, after that, when I talked to him on the phone, he was like, Mom, you know, I'm trying to piece together what happened. Uh, you know, I'll call you as soon as I get my head together. And when he did, we talked and I addressed him. He was still him. in Afghanistan during this time, no, he was he was oh, he back was from back Afghanistan. Okay, I got you. Yeah, he had been he'd been back about four months okay. from Afghanistan when this happened, so he was on base. Okay. And um, I, you know, I addressed him. I never pulled any punches with my kids. You know, I'm just very straightforward. Mm -hmm. We had we had dis discussed suicide, and he was like, "Oh no, mom, no, 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 it's nothing like that." And uh, he said, "But you know, maybe now, maybe now I can get some help for my depression." Get some help from what? For his depression. Okay. So, like I said, he was released to full duty with um, recommend, recommendation for command to send him to the SACO officer, which I've come to understand is the substance abuse control officer. Well, that didn't happen until a month later. Almost a month to the day was the first time he saw the SACO officer. Referrals were made to two different uh, facilities, hospital-type facilities, they gave him the military one source number, the de-stress line number, and he was to see the SACO officer bi-weekly and given a list of all the AA and NA meetings and where they were going on. And the SACO officer told him to um, go to two to three of these self-help meetings a week and abstain from alcohol and drugs. Now, let me stop you. Uh -huh. They they told him on to his own to go. Yes. To three. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. And to return bi weekly to the psycho officer until treatment began. There's something wrong with that picture. Yeah, I'm I've seen it too, so I want you Yes. There I mean there's something very wrong yeah. with that picture. So Anyway, one thing leads to another with all of this, and he just uh, accepts an administrative separation. So he thought, you know, that he would get a general discharge or, you know, which still would be other than honorable. Right. Um, but it turned out, and I don't know, I don't have all the information on this yet, but it turned out that um, there was a summary court martial, and they, I mean, they threw the book at him. You know, he did not deny anything. Mm -hmm. He pled guilty to all of it. 
you know. Mm -hmm. So he got 30 days in the brig at Miramar. And uh, then they put him through, you know, they busted him back down to private. He was a corporal. And they busted him back down to private, took two-thirds of his pay. All this is based on substance abuse? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, at, you know, after that, it was, and then it was a runaround trying to, to get, it's supposed to be 10 days, yeah. you know, to get your letter to get, to get this, out. I uh, group that you started. I want to go fast forward to what happened to him and, mm -hmm. and when he decided to. Well, he was home 15 months. And um, I could see him deteriorating, and, you know, he brought his girlfriend home How'd with him. How did you do that? How did you see it? Laziness or just no? I mean, no. You know, hygiene, whatever. when he got home, I mean, he couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, and I could just see as the months went by that things. You know, he used to go and work out. He used to ride his bike. Um, you know, he enjoyed doing things like that. And a couple of weeks before uh, before he died, he called me and he said, "Mom, you know, I, I just don't do anything that, like I used to do anymore. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in it." You know, and, and I told him, I said, you know, Johnny, you just got to push yourself to, to get out and do some, do those things. Um, and I worked a shift that I really was not available, you know, to mm -hmm. him. Um, you know, he would he was not eating. And matter of fact, I, I took dinner to him one night at work after I got home and he, you know, he called me and he's like, oh, I feel 7,000% better. You know, and, and in my mind, as, as a mom, mm -hmm. mama bear, oh, that's something I can do to help, yeah. you know. So I would make sure that the nights he worked, I would cook for him. I would make sure that, you know, if he needed a ride to work or something like that, you know, that I was there. Not knowing inadvertently that I was maybe demeaning this machoism yeah. that was, you know, We're going to run out of time. I need to go and get to the... The event then what happened okay. after? Well, September 12th, um, 2014, he shot himself in the heart. With Where a, was he at when he did He that? was at his home. At his home. Mm -hmm. did, he, did he live by himself? Or? He and his girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, uh, the reason I was rushing because I want to make sure that the after that you started a group, you, you really you really don't understand why it was handled the way it was the after the event, how he was handled. but. You want to use what happened to your son as a way to tell others what to right. look for. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if the military needs to change things, they need to put in your hand the signs of PTSD, whether it's combat related or or not. Yeah. You know what to expect from your veteran when they come home. Yeah. If you see these signs, get them <clears throat> some help. We run out of time. I'm gonna give you some time in my last part. We're gonna take a break. Gonna come back, I got news that you can use, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more with Donna. Stay where you are, I'll be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. I'm gonna go over a few things with you, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna talk with Donna Wesley just a little bit more uh, about her son and things that you can look for. And I wanna remind you about the, uh, as we do every week, about the law enforcement tag, that that's the way we get the funds to help build the memorials up in Centennial Memorial Park. And it helps, we got three more memorials to build up there, so uh, when you purchase that tag, uh, you're supporting the law enforcement that's uh, fallen in the line of duty, and you're helping us uh, build those memorials up there. So we were talking with Donna. Donna, I want to carry over some time into this, uh, finish up there, because what I want you to do is you notice some certain things about your son uh, that should have been a giveaway to you. You should have noticed those. You said mm -hmm. you were working and you couldn't be there, but there's some things that he was doing. So if someone's out there watching, some of the things they can look for that they might have a loved one is headed for uh, a bad right uh, right <laughs> uh, look for avoidance um avoidance yeah not not uh, being as close to, to family yeah. well yeah just not being around isolation mm -hmm. just isolating themselves you know from from everybody and everything um I told weight my church, loss I told, yeah so okay, yeah i told my church group the other day about want to sit in the very back of the church too. That's not just, that's because they don't want their back exposed. I right. could go into hours with you about when you was talking about with his buddies, how you, he'll share things with buddies they'll never share with family. I don't mm -hmm. care how close, but they, mm -hmm. they do mm -hmm. that. But anyhow, you said- but, You know, the main, the main thing, the main message in all of this and starting the group 
is I just want everybody, especially veterans, especially if you feel like you have PTSD, know that you're not alone. Communicate with us, the military families. We'll never know what you've been through. We'll never understand it. We weren't there. But we need to know so that we have some sort of connection yeah. and, and some sort of pathway, you know, to not pressure you. And your contact information is on the screen. But, right. But, you know, the, you're talking to a Marine and you're talking to Army or whatever, and they were taught all the way through their career <clears throat> not that you're the meanest, toughest there is. Mm -hmm. No little thing in your brain is going to get to you. No little thing like mm -hmm. alcohol or a little drug here mm -hmm. can bring a soldier down or a Marine down. So they, mm -hmm. the, the part to get them to admit they had a problem right. is hard to right. do. Right, and they're doing what they were trained to do. Right. You know, that they are. Wimp. You're a wimp if right. you acknowledge it. Right. You know, and then, then when something like what happens to my son mm -hmm. happens, they want to jerk out the zero tolerance policy, mm -hmm. you know, instead of getting them the treatment that they need, which they're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, we got veterans who, veterans who go into the VA and they get upset and they start spouting off at what they ought to do. And they they're really reacting to to something enter mm -hmm. to them just, mm -hmm. just like this past week over in birmingham the young man and his girlfriend he's having an episode ptsd episode she pulls over the right thing to do mm -hmm. pulls over and a guy hits his jake brakes which for those folks that don't know about jake brakes that's the same thing as the ak-47 sound right and he thought this under attack and he jumps out in front of a car and my God, you know, we buried him this week, and he, mm -hmm. it, it can happen in every different way, but that, pulling away, mm -hmm. no, pulling away, no social away, relationship problems, um, I think that was the final straw for Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, started having relationship problems. and All um, that can trigger it. financial, mm -hmm. kids, spouses, friends, all that stuff, you know, any kind of, it, they don't handle it as well as they used to before they got in, involved in war. Mm -hmm. We we run out of time. I wanna I wanna make sure that you folks got this number today, and uh, <clears throat> and that you uh, if you ever have any problem, you got my number. I'll put you in touch with Donna. But it's two five six three five four four seven six seven. If you have the need to discuss this, if you're experiencing something like it or think you might be experiencing, uh, I want you to to, to call that. Okay, uh, this week's salute goes out to Donna West and all those that are working with PTSD. We'll see you next week. Veterans Issues.